Good evening, everybody. My name is William Becker, and welcome to Paranormal Insights. This is the uh, pilot show for my new series, and tonight we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to be interviewed instead of interviewing someone else. The nature of this series is going to take several different forms. Part of the time we'll have discussions, conversations with people. Sometimes we'll do readings. Sometimes we'll read locations. Uh, we might have some educational class pieces, some of the things I do. Just to, it's going to be a real mix of things, so uh, it'll never be a dull moment. Well, with you, William, it never is a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I want to introduce Chris Kaloff. He is with Salem Paranormal yes, and sir. a big part of this TV show. And he is going to interview me tonight. Yeah, basically what we're doing is we're creating a show for a phenomenal human being to share his gift with the world um, in any, in every way possible because somebody like you who helps so many people I think deserves the opportunity to have that on a larger scale. So I'm, I I'm honored. I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Thank I am you. honored to be here to be able to interview you on your first pilot show. I am very honored. Well, it's a mutual. Thank you. So <clears throat> I guess we'll go ahead and start this interview off. Are you ready for some questions? We'll see. <laughs> There's some hard hitting, hard hitting questions. So, question number one: When, at what point in your life did you realize that you had a gift? You know, that's a good question, and I think about that. People ask me sometimes. It's hard to say. I saw my first ghost when I was eight, so that's the first concrete I've seen a ghost. Right. Um, there may have been other experiences younger, but I'm not sure if they were psychic experiences or something else. Uh, as far as then really looking and working at it, I was just starting college probably when I started working with friends and developing skills. Right. So yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> well, can you explain for people, because I mean, you, you hear the term psychic thrown around loosely all the time. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe explain to people what your gift kind of comes with, like the things that you are able to do. Right. And I get, to be honest, a little bit confused with all the terms. Right. I always just called myself psychic, and then people said, well, psychic just means you can tell there's somebody there. Medium talks back and forth. Okay, well, I talk back and forth, but I see, and I get the impressions, and I remote, and I do a lot of things that are part of it. Things develop over time. Um, as we use our, our abilities, then um, they get stronger, just like anything else. Practice makes better. Right. Um, not perfect. If you hear anybody that's a psychic say they're never wrong, run them, run away fast, <laughs> because we you know we make mistakes just like right. anybody else. It's not foolproof. That's uh, that's the thing, and that's the the, jo the joy of being able to work with somebody of your caliber is. I can't think of how many times that you've validated things that we've been a part of with you. And to, to see that happen, to see that validation actually take place, is it's an amazing thing to actually witness. So you're one of the, the people in this field that I totally respect when it comes to being able to do what it is you do. Thank you. So how long have you been actively teaching the public about how to access their own gifts? I started doing that part of it probably about four years ago, three to four. Um, right in that timeline. And what made you want to do that? What made you want to reach out to the public and, and kind of give them that experience? It sounds a little corny, but one, I'm good at it. Right. And it's when, I think everybody's psychic. Right. And when we allow ourselves to open up to the larger world around us, life is much richer. There are so many different kinds of beings out there, not just dead people. Right. And when you can see history, uh, one example, I was on a rock fortification mountaintop in Croatia, I think, and um, it looked like a fort. It had been used since pre-Roman times as a fortification. Roman ruins dated back to one and two, 
A.D. Wow. Not first and second century. <laughs> and you could see it. It was actively used as a fort since pre-Roman up through World War I. And to see the different groups of people and the Roman soldiers and the Byzantine soldiers and the Ottomans and then the Habsburgs and even see some of the clashes and some of the battles and see the men exercising and practicing sword play and all of that, it just brings it so much to life. You're standing in the street corner in a town in Ireland and you see roundhead soldiers and they say, oh, cool. And then you find out later, yeah, they were actually there. They had been there, so it wasn't just a figment of my imagination. Right. Historically, it was accurate. And it just, it opens up the world to people. Being able to talk to our loved ones. Um, just so many things. Life, I think, is fuller. Yeah. Do you have an experience that kind of, I guess, bigger than most, like the, that, that climactic experience that you could share with people as far as encountering an entity or being at a place where it was just very overwhelming. I guess that what I'm looking for is the, 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 big, the biggest experience you've had thus far. Okay, I, I think maybe my first trip to Wellington. Now Wellington, it's up in Washington, it's by Stevens Pass, it's the site of the worst train avalanche disaster in U.S. history anywhere from 90 something to 120 something people were killed. They're not quite sure because a lot of them were workers who were undocumented. Right. And I met Karen Frazier and her husband Jim and several other people up there. I went with a few people in a group I was with. And Karen has literally written the book on the place. In fact, she's written two of them. Outstanding, you can go on Amazon and get her books. And um, I walked around the parking lot now, which is where the town used to be. It was a railroad town. It only existed for maintenance of the tracks and to service right. the trains. And I described what was going on in all the different locations. There, there weren't even foundations left. I mean, nothing. And I got it all right. And. And they, I didn't read anything. I knew nothing about the history other than train avalanche. Right. We went out to the snow shed they built after the avalanche, a little late, and I saw the entities that they had seen. I got the psychic impression that matched their own physical experiences. Wow. We went down to where the trains landed. It's a, we scrambled down about a 100-foot cliff. And I was getting the names and occupations of people wow. and if they were kids or not. And then afterwards, we looked at the back of Karen, Karen's book and it all lined up. Wow. And so that was the experience that said, yes, you, you really are good at this. And I, it was something I knew I could do, but that was the aha moment that, right. okay. Well, that reminds me of when you were with us and we went out to check out the abduction site of uh, a local case here in Salem, mm -hmm. knowing little to nothing about the accounts of what were happening, and you being able to say so many things that, that correlated with the case, mm -hmm. even new things, you know, that um, we're still, we're finding validation on at this point. So, oh, good. Yeah, I mean, you just have this knack of being able to see it, pull it out, and, and know what's happening. Okay, thank you. And it's you. just a phenomenal trait, so. Thank you. Um, I guess the next kind of big question is, is, as far as your service goes, do you feel like you're, you're helping people by doing what you do? I do. I think when I'm teaching, I think I'm helping open up a larger world to people and helping them to understand what's going on around them. To be honest, it takes a lot of fear away. So often people feel like something's eerie, so it's frightening. They just have a funny feeling, but they don't know what it is, so they're scared. Well, when you can see what it is, you don't have to be scared anymore. It's like the kid having the nightmare, or not the nightmare, but the, you know, the monster showing up on the wall. Right. And then you peel back the, cur the curtains, and it's the moon shining through the tree branches, blowing in the wind through the window shade. Right, right, right. You don't have to be afraid anymore. And so it helps with that. And it also, with the readings and such I do, I can give people answers. I can give people closure a lot of times. Um, help them with communication right. in many different ways. So. Well, you mentioned the class a couple times. So, I mean, is there anything as far as you can give us 
in this interview a little tidbits about the class that people could expect if they came to a class for, for this? Yeah, I do different kinds of classes. I have one a set kind of a Finding Your Psychic Voice class. Details for all the classes are on my website, paranormalinsights.net. Remember but, that, folks. Camera, on me, paranormalinsights.net. William Becker, that's the man. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> And no, I don't pay this man. Um, <laughs> um, but it's an intro class that's good for anybody right. that we go through grounding and shielding. We go through different kinds of filtering and shielding ideas, protection. How do you turn off? What to expect? Um, giving respect, that's one of the things I insist on. It's their space. We're the visitors. Right. And I, I have a zero tolerance for abuse of the paranormal beings. Right. And after all the beings I've talked to, they've always respected me so far. Right. Well, we even have a member on staff of our crew that her gift was, I, I mean, she was brought more in tune after taking one of your courses. So, I mean, talk about validation close to home. She mm -hmm. is your biggest, one of your biggest supporters because you opened the door for her, for right. her to go out there and, and start experiencing things with the gifts that she has. So that I hope that's something that makes you feel good. It does, it makes me feel good. There's few, th few things in life make me feel better than seeing my students open up and get it. And it's, you know, those ah moments, right. it's fantastic. Or somebody who says I'm psychic as a stump and they're reading a, a location and they see a child that we then pick out of a picture right. with many other children in it or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Well, that, see, to me, it's just, it's so amazing to, to hear these things that you do and how you help people and how not just you help the entities or help the people living with the particular energies they have, but how you help them find their gift and, and they're able to use that in their everyday life. And it makes mm -hmm. them feel so much better about who they are and not feel like they're crazy. So, I mean, to me, it right. looks like you're helping all over the board in every level. Thank you. I, I, I hope so. And everybody has different needs. I mean, one of the things, most of the readings I do, for example, are more past and between life related, and then how that affects to the current situation right. or current life mission. I don't read the future. It can change anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> and we can be wrong. And right. that's a lot of, it's more responsibility I want than to tell somebody, okay, you you need to do this and this and this. They make a major life change and it doesn't work. You know? Right. So. Well, you've been teaching for four years, mm -hmm. which is an amazing thing, and you've, you've had this gift since a young age. What, let me find a way to word this so it doesn't come across just direct, and, but what, what is the difference you're looking to make in the paranormal community, in the psychic community, and just all around everyday life? What is the, the difference you're trying to make, or are you trying to make one? Mostly I'm just trying to be me. And I have some services that help some people and make those available where they are available. I hope that when I'm in a, a situation, be it an investigation, working with people, whatever, I can bring in an insight right. that, especially with scientific investigations, which are very important, I have nothing against them at all, honestly, I do them but having the psychic piece blend in with it right. and they work together i like the unifying piece where it just all meshes right right um and keeping a sense of calm and respect i don't get it when people get touched on the head when they've asked to be and they go shrieking out of the room i'm not trying to make fun of anybody but it's like well thank you i appreciate that very much right. um well, you definitely have a different opinion. I mean, there's a lot of ghost hunters nowadays that if the wind blows by the ear or something, they freak out automatically. And I think mm -hmm. it's because of the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I think it's amazing that you're taking that and saying there's nothing to be afraid of. There is no unknown. Mm -hmm. Because if you unlock this in your mind, you can now pull back those curtains and see the moon through the trees and see what it's really there for and, and mm -hmm. the real worth of what's happening. It makes you a phenomenal human being. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I haven't run across anything pure evil. I can't. In my opinion, it doesn't exist. I'm open to be, you know, find something else, but I haven't found them. I found grumpy beings. Right. I have found defensive beings because they've been persecuted for millennia. Um, 
but I haven't found any I couldn't get along with. Right. And any who, well, they know I know that they can't hurt me. <laughs> and that helps, too. <laughs> that makes total <laughs> sense. So <clears throat> with, with all of that being said, and, and your class being a phenomenal thing, which we will be having a class in Salem in May, that's going to be happening. Oh, and just to put with that, too, I have longer events, too, where we'll cover some of those things. I've also taught classes on elementals, and I do classes in a lot of different locations. Just came back from the Stanley Hotel. I've got one set up for the Queen Mary in September. Yep. I've got one, a class, several-day class event being set up in New Orleans, and I've got a travel agent now that I'm setting up events overseas yeah, with. You'll find the founder of Salem Paranormal pinching his pennies too to be at the Queen Mary one because that's what I want to come and support you on. Mm -hmm. What about this one this summer? Aren't you doing a, a quite awesome trip this summer? I am actually. I didn't think I was going out of the country this year but it looks like I'm going to Russia and that's not a psychic. Tr well actually I'm hoping t to right. have a psychic piece to it. Uh, my family was Volga Germans, Germans that went to Russia with Catherine the Great, stayed German. Um, and this is a tour that's going to my grandma and grandpa's village. Really? And her father's house was one of the biggest in buildings in town, and it's still there and different things. So, so far there are at least six of us cousins going. Wow, and that's maybe kind more. Of awesome. Do you think that you're, that you're, um, everything that you have well, as far as your gift and being able to see, do they maybe you'll be able to come across some of your heritage on this trip? I think so, or at least pick up more of the family or the village life. Uh, I'm not sure how many people were in it. Uh, a few thousand, right. I think, according to Grandma. Um, but at least pick up pieces of it and get some impressions of yeah. what it was like. And then record those, and I have a nice camera, and hopefully another book out of it. There you go. Mm -hmm. So what keeps you going? What What is it that keeps you pushing forward, trying to continue teaching, trying to continue observing, and helping out um, all the teams you've helped out and all that stuff? What, what, what drives you to, to keep going? I like dead people. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, bad joke, but, <laughs> but uh, I'm good at bad jokes. But I like the beings. I have right. friends that are dead and have been for a long time. There's one guy called Carlos in Oregon City from under the old dock area. He used to break kneecaps and stab people and do interesting things. He was an enforcer dude. Right. He and I like, get along great. And he's even let me see him as a full-bodied apparition twice in the middle of the afternoon. What, can I, may, may I ask, if, I mean, you're, you're a sweet individual. You're an amazing human being. What would you and an enforcer conversate about, just out of curiosity? Oh, just kind of anything. We laugh, we joke. He knows that I know he can't hurt me, and he knows I don't want to hurt him. And you see, that's one of the keys. Right. No judgment. I don't judge who they are or were. Right. And he knows it, and so we just banter around a little bit. It hasn't been an in-depth conversation. Certain amount of laughing. People have noticed him following me when I used to give tours, um, following me around after we'd go there. Right. And you know, just cool dude. Maybe protective at this point. I think protective. so. Uh -huh. So <coughs> another question as far as it goes with exactly what you do. What, I'm trying to find another way to word this. So we have the, the, the moment where you were like, okay, this, I'm good at this. This mm -hmm. is the case. Let's go back and touch on the first couple moments that you had as far as seeing apparitions and, and that type of stuff. So people have a firm idea of, of who you are and where this began at, the, at that beginning point. Okay. Uh, let's see. My first, well, eight, eight years old. Right. And a group of us were hanging around an old part of Oregon City and the woman who was watching us was the mother of four of the kids and my sister was there, I was there, and another friend was there. And the mother watching us was passed out drunk on the sofa early afternoon. She didn't babysit us again. <laughs> uh, and I saw this little boy peeking out. There's a outdoor elevator, only one in North America, a grand staircase and that kind of thing going up and down the cliff. This little boy kept peeking out, 
and so I asked the the guy whose neighborhood we were in who it was and if he could play with us. And my friend said, "No, that's Carl Green. He's dead. He died of typhoid." I was like, "Oh, okay." And we just right. kept playing. Then. 40 years later, 38 years, no, more than that, 45 years later, I'm taking the tour in Oregon City, and the little redhead boy comes up as possibly somebody else first, and I'm thinking, no, that's Carl Green, and I hadn't even thought about him for a long time. Then when I started doing the tours, found him in the history books, died of typhoid in 1913 from the last epidemic. Wow. Can't find his grave find a lot of family members, we think, but can't find him. Possibly unmarked, or do you think he's just somewhere else? Possibly unmarked. Um, and I had a historian who did the genealogy for the family say that right. often in those days they would cremate family members and surreptitiously put a few ashes on one grave and a few under another and a few under another at, in the middle of the night. So right. that might be it. But mm, interesting. So that was the first real experience. Right. And I've had several then full-bodied apparitions. You s the shadowy figure movements lots of times. Right, right, right. Uh, it's kind of nice when you get to see the person like in the in Malmesbury at the Old Bell right. Hotel, my, one of my favorite places in England, uh, hotel-wise. Built in 1220 as a guest house for the monastery. Wow. And I always get to stay in the old part. And the lady in, the gray lady, who's also the lady in black, and I saw her, she was closer to me than you are. She was on the stairs, and I was standing down below, right next to the stairs. And I just saw the piece of her that was in my field of vision I was looking, you know, straight out. So I, she, by the time I could go look all the way up and down, she was gone. But her dress, uh, the painting of her, I saw after I saw her. Right. The dress was the same. Wow, that that's one of those things that is completely fascinating. The fact that <clears throat> you have people that go around claiming to be, you know, psychic or have some kind of ability that that go their entire lives without validation, and it seems mm -hmm. like even these entities themselves are trying to validate how real it is for you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, to me, it's fascinating that how much the living love you, because in the pursuit of the show, we've talked to a lot of people, we've, we've discussed a lot of stuff, uh -oh. and there's not one ill word spoke of you. Well, I appreciate that. That and, makes me feel very and good. And the community, and as far as I've reached out, there's not been one bad word everybody loves and has validated at least something or another that you've told them. Well, that makes me very happy, and I'm very humbled and grateful, actually. Well, it's, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the I fact that... I may need that, a tissue before. <laughs> I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you've taken so much of your time to find people and help them, whether it's them internally, it's a situation they're a part of, or helping them open their mind. I know that, that you know, like I said, we have a member that you unlocked her mind to that, mm -hmm. and I know she's internally, eternally grateful. I am as well for having you in my life, because not, as, not just this is an interview, I want to take the second to say that Having you a part of, of my life personally and a life in the community as far as what we're doing has meant the world to me. It has been an honor and a privilege to work with mm -hmm. you and to call you my friend. And my, just you, you mean the world to myself and everybody you touch. Thank you. And that makes you one of the most terrific human beings ever. Well, it's mutual with you. Right. And I thank you and I am getting teary. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to follow up on that one. I'm just very touched. Well, then I've, I've got one more question for you. Okay. And we'll get you back untearied. Okay. We'll get you back from that. So what does the future have in store for William Becker? What are your plans? If somebody wanted to come see you, where could they see you? And what, what do you see yourself doing in the next couple of years? Okay. Uh, continuing the teaching. Right. And I will be having events overseas. Uh, that's a big part of the goal. And I actually have the people now that can help me put those together in a way that's going to be feasible. Right. And I will continue working on events all around the country. I like traveling. Right. I'm happiest and more myself and most at home when I'm on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, 
it's the way it is. <laughs> and well, Donald Trump running for president, I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, another story. <laughs> but just in general, I mean, the first time I ever felt at home in my life was the first time I landed at Heathrow, and it's still that way. So I plan on doing more of that right. kind of work. And hanging out with friends and going to concerts and having, having dinner and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. But as far as I can, t my p goal is to continue to build what I'm doing now. Right. Uh, make the tours or the classes and tour combinations and get more books out there. I've got one, which I left over there. Uh, that's out, but you can see it on my website. I w did it with a photographer. Remember, guys, camera. Remember, William Becker, paranormalinsights.net. You can find his books. You can find where he's going to be. Make sure you check it out. Thank you. You're welcome. It's honestly, I don't <laughs> pay this guy. Um, so, mostly that kind of thing. Right. And I keep learning. I've got some new twists or some new ideas that I want to present to people and put out there. They're still somewhat abstract in my mind, so I can't announce the anything yet. Right. Uh, but there'll, there'll be changes and uh, just keep learning and growing myself. And like I say, I love to talk to dead people. <laughs> I, the, de the dead don't scare me, and it's a real cliche joke right. in the paranormal f world, but it's true. The dead don't scare me. It's the living sometimes that make me a little uncomfortable. And, and being in the field as long as I have, I can understand that. But what I would like to say in closing is thank you very much. It's an honor and a privilege to have sat here on your show and being able to interview you to open this up. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your doing this and being here and all the amazing support. Um, you're also a big part of this show. And I will and, continue to be, yes. And, uh, yeah, and Chris is part of the back behind the scenes, and Kent is back behind the scenes, and yeah. um, a lot of people back there behind the scenes. So. And the thing is, we couldn't be more happy to bring a show to life without somebody like you. Like, I mean, you have, you're what makes me really want to put the show out there so the world can see what somebody who's true, who's honest, who's dependable and respectful can do. And thank and you. And that, that means the world to me. So I'm, I'm honored to sit here on Paranormal Insights with William Becker and interview him. I'll let you go ahead and close out your show. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to everybody who listened. We're, we're almost out of time. I hope you are back next time. Like I say, we're going to have a variety of different things going on on the show. It's not going to all be you listening to me talk about myself. Um, the problem is people can sit here and listen to you talk about yourself for hours, <laughs> so I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> You're very kind. And um, we'll see you next week, Sounds I believe. Sounds like a plan. Okay, thank, thank you Thank you all. guys for watching.